And so, Jessica, can you share the link? Thank you. Um, to the group map. And the first thing you'll see on the group map, um, and I don't know if you want to share it up on the screen, Jessica, as we go into it. Perfect. So it should be that um, how could the Alliance's strategic priorities be used to further the greening of the CPHA sector itself? What can the Alliance itself do to mitigate its own impact on the environment? How can the Alliance support its members to take practical steps to mitigate their impacts on the environment? What are the obstacles to taking practical steps to mitigate our own organization's impact on the environment? And what are practice practical steps that we as local and international CPHA actors can take to mitigate our impact on the environment. So the last question is uh, individually. The second to last question is organizationally. The middle question is around the Alliance, um, supporting members. The second to top question, the second question is around the Alliance itself. And the top question is kind of looking at a broader, how do we position this within the five-year strategy that we, we now have. So people can vote. I'm gonna come off mine. So if you go in and let us know which of those questions you want to prioritize. Um, so we need to have slides here. We hope to have time for at least two, probably only two in 20 minutes that remain. Plus we're then gonna look specifically at um, next steps. But, uh, this is Audrey speaking, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. I, I think, I mean, I think the question, the last question and the one before last in some ways could be addressed at once. In a sense that obviously individually there are stuff that you can do, but you can do some stuff individually and still in jointly with your organization. Um, giving a practical example, the uh, printing policy type of things that can be done individually and organization wise. That's just the one example out of many, but just in case people have some you know, difficulty to pick up, I'm thinking that would be a way. <laughs> And this is obviously a conversation that needs to continue, which is why we're talking about ways forward within the Alliance. So you will be our framers, um, one of the set of framers for this particular challenge. Okay, do we, do people need a bit more time or do you feel that you've, um, just trying to see if we have everybody, I think so. I'll go to the results. Okay. So first, are what are practical steps that we as local and individual actors, so as individual actors, can take to mitigate our impact? The second one kind of tied is how could the Alliance's strategic priorities be used and how can the Alliance support its members to take practical steps to mitigate their impacts on the environment? All right. Um, so why don't we start with that top, that first one? I can't drag it down. <laughs> can you drag that one down for us, Jessica? resizing it for us, great. So if we're looking at um, the possibilities that the new five-year strategy um, allows us to talk as an alliance and to talk with our members within the alliance about mitigating how our responses and our preparedness and our prevention um, negatively impact the physical environment of children, the climate, so to speak. It's hard to use that word in this context, so I, I'm going with environment, though I'm, people may say there's a better word. Um, do people want to jump in? Do you have some ideas that, I think we can type them in here once it's activated, is that right, Jessica? Yes, you should be able to. So using that link underneath, you should be able to start to type in ideas. We'll focus on question one at the moment. Don't know if we want to walk through the, um, the strategic priorities to give ourselves some structure. 
But for example, if we take um, accountability, obviously as the first one, how could we use that? Um, Joanna, I have a suggestion. Yeah, <laughs> I actually, I, I don't know, uh, I would say I don't know anything about this topic. This is why I chose this session because I thought uh, I, I really want to learn. So um, I don't know, my uh, wish would be, um, you know, for example, first of all, it would be great to have a, a, a framework that just would make us, all of us understand what are the possible linkages between child protection, for example, and the environment, you know, and just something that really make us understand uh, uh, where the linkages are and uh, in what way our action can contribute to greening. I think uh, that would be already very helpful for most of us. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if that can we can link that to which strategic priority, but certainly to the elevation of learning and development. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Good that one. would be. So do you want to pop that in, Anita, as one of the ideas? Yeah. Super. And this is a brainstorming. It's not a presentation. It's a brainstorm and discussion of what we think we want to suggest is taken forward by the Alliance itself. I can see Jason raising his hand. Physically, Sorry. Not, not virtually. <laughs> I, I don't see anybody anymore. So. Okay. Okay, so please, we're only nine. So please, everybody, feel free to just jump um, in. Yes, I mean, yes, accountability. But then I think we have to be thinking seriously, what do we mean by accountability? Um, the discussion that I attended on Wednesday was mostly focused on child participation, which of course is important, but that's not just about being accountable to children. It's about holding duty bearers to account. And when it comes to climate, the climate crisis, those duty bearers are very powerful actors. As we know, you know, they are the oil industry, they are many governments and very powerful people, individuals and, and institutions. So I think my question back to the Alliance is to what extent does the Alliance see itself as an Alliance rather than the individual members see itself as an advocacy body, a body that actually brings together a large number of important organizations with a, to deliver a very powerful message and be part of that mobilization of civil society that we need in order to tackle the polluters, in order to change the whole dynamic, in order to you know, really push governments to do way, mu way much more than they are currently doing. You know, so my question is back to the Alliance. Does the Alliance actually, as an Alliance, have um, a, a, an idea to operate as a you know to push forward those messages to create the challenge to demand of its fellow members say the children in the us not to be taking money from chevron and exxon i, I think I, I would agree with you jason and i think you know it was part of the discussion we were as well i think when mrs otani did his uh, her sorry friday evening her opening remarks um, and it's the part of opportunity, like there, there are a certain number of things happening that I think looking at partnership, because you said, yes, the Alliance has members, but there is as well some partnership opportunities that we should explore as an Alliance uh, to come together and, and have a little bit of, of weight on a, on a certain number of topics. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like how we could potentially support that, uh, support the general comments moving forward. How can we, once the general comment will be ready, how we can as well um, advocate, etc. But I don't want to take too much the floor. Um, but thank you for raising that point about going further than just participation. But of course, I would say that we shouldn't be forgetting participation either. Yeah, I think, I mean, Jason, I don't know uh, if you've been able to articulate it there in under priority question one, but I mean, we do have our advocacy working group. It is one of the fundamental pieces of the Alliance. And I think that the challenge that you're putting forward to us um, goes beyond then lending our weight to others or seeing how they lend their weight to us. But I mean, I, I reflect back on the, the opening remarks that, that William made about, you know, how we have created a space, how we as the Alliance are leading in this area. And we 
we have a space to step forward and this may well be one area that we are needed to in terms of accountability that children need us to step forward into it. Um, I think it also comes back though to uh, Anita's uh, point around what do we know and what linkages can we demonstrate clearly that we can articulate on um, because I don't think we have many yet but we do work with children across the board and certainly in working across sectors and family strengthening we're working with actors you know all humanitarian actors or the potential to work with many many humanitarian actors as an alliance um, so how do we help all of us articulate um, the damage that is being done to children by um, by the climate crisis from our perspective of you know it rolling out on the ground of affecting humanitarian action I mean, just on the participation piece, one of my concerns, you know, because I've been in this, in and around this field for 20 years, and, I've, you know, we all talk about participation, and I've written about participation quite extensively. Mm -hmm. But one of the problems that it you know, keeps occurring is that we tend to listen to the voices that are comfortable to us. And we also even avoid situations where we have to listen to young people's voices that are not comfortable to us you know we, we we shape it through our own norms we shape what participation looks like through our norms through our agendas through our own politics even though we're not necessarily explicit about that you know so you know how do, are, are we actually willing to listen to the voices for example of young people in ecuador who are you know who who whose lives have been devastated by a company that's giving money to save the children. Are we willing to listen to those voices and act upon them? Or, or do we listen to the voices that frame things in a nice way that doesn't you know, create discomfort for us? You know, this is a really big question. It's one thing just to you know, say, we're doing children's participation, but we often hide the politics that actually shape the way we do or refuse to act upon what we hear when we engage young people in participation. There needs to be a, a much greater honesty about the limitations as institutions that we have and for I, doing participation. And I think with the willingness of the centrality of putting the centrality of children and their protection needs uh, as an overarching goal uh, is one of the way forward. I'm not saying that is that this will solve everything. Uh, Jason, but it's something that we can take into consideration. Once again, we are opening the discussion. We may want to reflect on some of our practice, whether it's at individual organization or even network level. Um, I think as well, we have been through some changes, all of us, um, including with COVID-19. I mean, we can even ask ourselves, is it, I mean, is it, is it an, a good green way to go back to a face-to-face -face meeting when we uh, fly people around the world <clears throat> or do we continue virtual meeting? This is another, this is as well, like the, what I'm trying to say is that the, the scale of topics and we are just opening the discussion today and I'm very glad that you see so many people but the scale of the discussion and the variety of topics are indeed very much important to look at and it will take some time for us to reflect and not and stop looking away as I was saying at the beginning of the of the day today. Yeah, as I framed it it's it's time to turn the lens on ourselves um, and and be accountable for our actions our lack of actions how we frame things and I think as Audrey says this is a, a starting point as we um, launch the strategy and and take these important issues within it. Um, is there... Actually, yeah, I, I was thinking because there, there are bridges between question one and, and question two, and I will be uh, quite interested potentially to, to hear from, uh, from, from the other colleagues um, in the room as, you know, something that I've been in the field for 20 years myself, and, you know, like the, our capacity to kind of, um, buy locally or invest locally uh, in the type of activities we are doing instead of importing. Uh, that might be something that we want as well to reflect on uh, moving forward. And that touch, you know, the, 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 the two question in the way that 
you know, uh, avoir, um, avoir, to have a look. <laughs> a locally based response, but as well, is there anything that we can do to mitigate at the same time the environment or impact? But I'll be very happy to hear from the seven, nine other people in the room. We put some ideas on the mapping. I don't know if, oh, shall yeah. we? I don't think my brain can produce more than the two of us. <laughs> It's very, um, you know, I was just doing a quick research. I remember, but I wouldn't know the content. Two, three years ago, I read a um, study. I mean, so, okay, let's say. The funny, I, I, so I actually wanted to hear if somebody is, uh, uh, somebody knows anything about, or, you know, I don't know, Justin, you see my researcher, maybe, you know, something, it's, it was about, again, clean cooking and clean cooking and GBV. I'm, I'm trying desperately to look for it online, but I can't find it. Um, yeah, but so just to say, even, I think also maybe looking at the topic of clean cooking um, might be something that uh, could be interesting for us. It's not clean cooking, but okay. uh, one of our former students mm -hmm. um, has designed a hand washing machine. Um, his oh, Susan, I don't... <laughs> Phew, the recording stopped. <laughs> um, Sorry, I just dropped off. I'm not sure what happened. That's okay. Um, there's some other people on the in the session that haven't spoken, and since this is a brainstorm, we're just trying to get ideas out there. We and then we'll see what. In particular, we think the Alliance could take forward. And obviously, as Audrey has said, this is only a first discussion. Is there anyone else who wants to speak to one of the points they've put up or one of the points they see, or maybe just try something that, <laughs> try to float something they haven't even written up? As Anita mentioned in the beginning, I'm not really, uh, I don't know a lot about greening uh, child protection in humanitarian action. And uh, um, I, I, I I wanted to listen from uh, um, from uh, uh, someone who knows better than me. Uh, however, looking at the um, ideas that was on uh, on uh, on the um, on the screen, uh, I get uh, from my perspective. I'm thinking that a lot of uh, uh, organization, international and national, are just uh, starting to think about climate change and what, what they can do to green their intervention. So the idea of having a framework, a very simple one, where we have, uh, that's the climate change consequences by this kind of intervention, that's what we can do to green. That would be probably the first one important first step for organization to go through it and see what they can do. And then it, it just came in to my mind, uh, um, listening to you all, um, that it could be also good to have a sort of uh, exchange forum um, where uh, the alliance member can share experience uh, and uh, uh, post the challenges and uh, and maybe there is other other um, organization international local whatever they have the same problem and they found the solution and then discuss together. And uh, maybe it could be also um, one of the topic that could be included in the community of practice uh, on the chain, um, what's yeah. the name? Um, the, new, the, the one that will be launched soon, uh, in mid-October, considering the climate change and environmental consideration in child protection are raising as topic. Yeah. Please, uh, Anna, those are both great ideas and, and this is a brainstorm session. So let's put them in as some concrete possibilities, uh, both the framework and, and the community of practice. Um, 
theme. Thank you. Um, in the interest of time, I think Susan, you, I heard your voice coming in. Oh gosh, I forgot what I was uh, gonna say then. <laughs> I think it was about, um, yeah, what I wrote here about um, like being active on, in terms of the priority on multi-sectoral collaboration and really being active and promoting within the sector um, how child how child protection can participate like in environmental impact assessments and work um, that's often going on in country responses, maybe having guidance for members on how they can, you know, who they can be contacting and what they could look at within, um, within our interventions that would be useful for, for that type of cross-sectoral work. Great. Yeah, thank you for that. Shall we, what are we being told? Time is up. All right. Um, should we go a little bit more uh, into the second question? I see some ideas there, but I'm wondering if you just wanted to turn our, our discussion to kind of any concrete measures we would suggest the Alliance Secretariat, Alliance members um, to take forward? I um hello there amanda here may i say something i don't know please to raise my hand on, on zoom um ayana um so this is not my idea uh but i thought it was great so uh, i i thought i would share it with you here um that is um a colleague of mine who suggested to have um climate change considerations for the standards and adaptation, just like uh, the Alliance did for, for COVID-19, could be related to, to standards, could be related to pillars, but having that sort of, of guidance for um, child protection um, and CPMS practitioners. Interesting. So adding this to um, either indicators or measurements somehow. Yes. Yes, yeah. or you know, having a separate note as we have done, or maybe including it in uh, in the next uh, edition of the CPMS, uh, but also um, as we have done with prevention or uh, gender consideration, also having climate change and and, and greening considerations. Yeah, lovely. I um, really like this idea. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. It's not mine. It's, it's it's my colleague <laughs> called David Bloomer. Okay. <laughs> Um, so can you pop that into, not sure which one we'd want to go with, maybe for two, <laughs> one, two. Um, any others, lots of support for that. So thank you for bringing it forward, Amanda. Um, so under the kind of what the Alliance itself can do to mitigate its own impact on the environment. So maintaining virtual meetings, I don't know how supported that is work more with local consultants instead of flying global consultants. I don't know how many consultants the Alliance itself um, uh, hires, there must be some. Um, ensure resources are easy to use online, so there's no need to print. So yes, yeah, scale up our understanding of readability online. Um, I've been learning things about color, um, color saturation and so on. Share some existing training materials on greening humanitarian aid. And there's some examples here. Include environment in its advocacy messages. Sign the climate charter. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. Or do you have an idea sitting at the secretariat yeah. level? <laughs> no, I, yeah, I'm going back to what a couple of you said about the fact that we are not necessarily that familiar with the topic. And uh, yes, elevating learning and development, but I'm sure there are plenty like already discussing with you guys the past 20 minutes, I have learned about different initiatives and I'm sure there are so many out there um, that would potentially prevent us to reinvent the wheel. And so one of my recommendations will be to, to have that level of curiosity and go and try to, to look at what what is happening and is there are stuff that we can already either join or, or use or complement 
uh, to, I really like what Mr. Castellanos was saying earlier, like joining forces and that that's something we may want to, um, to look at and so learn more about what the others are already doing as well. We only have a couple of minutes. Um, anything else that we want to get on the board? Because this is what's captured, obviously. I'll, I'll try to reflect it in the presenting back. I think, I mean, part of, part of building capacity, our own capacity, I think is to really think more deeply about the vulnerability. And, you know, we, we all talk about vulnerability a lot, but actually it's quite complex. I think it's much more complex than we, you know, how do we actually understand vulnerability? There are many different ways of understanding how children are vulnerable. And I think, you know, this is why an intersectional perspective is so important. We need to really be thinking about the processes. We need to bring in much more attention to class, much more attention to race and ethnicity, much more attention to, to disability, you know, within that understanding of, of vulnerability. I mean, the work that's been done on so-called natural disaster, which of course is usually not natural at all, has done, you know, has laid the groundwork for this. I'm not saying it's necessarily, you know, climate change is necessarily the same, but you know, there has been some important work. If we talk, you know, we end up talking about children as a vulnerable group, we're often in, in trouble because, you know, that, that does a disservice to many children. It also is very inaccurate. It doesn't help us to understand where the work needs to be done. Um, it doesn't help us to understand the types of vulnerability that certain children will, will experience, that not necessarily other children will experience. So I think we need a much, much more um, rigorous understanding of vulnerability and how it's produced, how it's experienced, than, than I think we generally have at the moment. Yep. Joanna, do you want to move on to the second? I'm just brief? trying to catch up with messages about are we <laughs> extending this time or not? <laughs> yeah, I think they're going to give you a bit more time. So. Okay. All right. Um, so, I mean, I've been taking notes, obviously, trying to summarize some of this, but um, based on this discussion, if we were to pull anything out from priority one or priority two, or even to reframe it and put it over into um, our greening CPHA kind of ways, ways forward within the Alliance. I mean, I have, you know, points around, you know, ensuring that we maintain or become um, more able to bring an intersectional lens to this issue um, and to our working within this space because it sounds like we have some space. Um, we, I, I love the idea of mapping our curiosity, um, Audrey, kind of fusing two ideas there. We need a framework. We have this community of practice. We are curious at this um, at this stage. There are things that are already happening that either directly or indirectly could be things that we learn from. So mapping our curiosity, using the community of practice to do that. I hear um, very much the need for a framework, but to keep it simple at this point, don't overstate it if we don't, don't know it, but at least provide a framework and that could maybe come back to um, some of the overlay we could give to our indicators um, and the way we measure our work, um, our humanitarian interventions. Um, and then the issue of advocacy and how do we position ourselves as an alliance? Um, are we ready to step into or create if necessary, um, the space to challenge ourselves, our members, other humanitarian actors, governments around the impacts that we are seeing of the climate crisis on children and their families as we are the band-aid, as we are the, the ones trying to assist um, on the ground um, when disaster befalls. And I think also thinking about not only the level three disasters, but also what really, you know, one thing that I heard from the presenters, you know, that the cyclical, you know, something that used to be once in a lifetime that now is three times in a lifetime and how that has impact or, you know, used to be every 10 years, it's now every year. Um, so I think challenging ourselves to look in both of those frameworks. 
As Those are my key takeaways, but if we come back to actual um, just step one, forward, one, go ahead. One quick, one quick suggestion that actually, you know, future alliance meetings should have a component which is very deliberately educational. You know, that we actually you know, take a theme and, and it's not just explaining a new strategy, or whatever, it's really getting into what, really trying to understand, you know, clarify what do we mean by resilience? What do we mean by vulnerability? What do we, you know, what, what, re, you know, what are the challenges on the ground to participation? How does participation end up being not very participatory? Whatever, just as examples. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that alliance meetings should have an, a strong element of capacity building that, that's more than just presentation of people's projects, that's actually really trying to understand, really trying to develop a, a shared understanding of some absolutely fundamental principles and ideas. Mm -hmm. Maybe to link that with the elevated part uh, on learning uh, within the strategic plan, I think it's a it's it's a good idea. It's always a little bit tricky to find the right balance because, you know, the annual meeting is the only occasion where everyone comes together. But I think there might be something or anyway other ways to um, to look at those type of suggestions that you just made, Jason, in terms of you know common understanding uh finding a way to come together and discuss a little bit more in depth some of those um, um oh sorry my english is terrible tonight <laughs> but some of those topics and issues it's friday apologies um but point taken i'm sure i don't think people can see my screen until i until i uh put it down but um, so annual meetings should have an educational component to help us get to a shared understanding of something and a deepened understanding of something. This ties into the elevated learning element of the strategy. We heard about developing a simple framework uh, for understanding um, our impacts as a sector. Um, and then the suggestion of including measurement. Um, as part of that developing a, uh, a simple framework, it's, I'm just going to call it mapping our curiosity and, and linking to um, what exists and our community of practice. Mm -hmm.